Hi, my name is Terry Kuti. I am founder and director of Deep Sea Foundation. I want to welcome you to our educational channel where we talk about topics related to breast cancer and breast reconstruction. I'm very pleased uh, today to be with two very special friends. I'm visiting San Antonio this week to celebrate the 10K run uh, honoring the 10,000 flap surgeries that were performed at the reconstructive center that I went to for my uh, breast reconstruction deep flap at PRMA. But there are so many wonderful advocates uh, here in San Antonio. I wanted to visit them today, these two dear friends. I'm with Sandy and Denise, who are both with the Alamo Breast Cancer Foundation. So I'm gonna let Sandy start off today and tell us a little bit about uh, the Alamo Breast Cancer Foundation. Okay, thank you, Terry. It's wonderful to be with you and to see you again. Yeah. It's been great. I know. Um, and cool. lectures good too. Yes, it was. <laughs> we're all on the phone right now, but we're gonna, yeah. we're gonna chat about this now. <laughs> um, so the Alamo Breast Cancer Foundation was started in 1992 or 93 mm -hmm. by Dale Eastman and uh, four other breast cancer survivors around her kitchen table. Mm -hmm. And uh, since then, we have grown and uh, we do programs here in San Antonio. We're a local nonprofit grassroots group. We're not national. And so we're just local. We do outreach programs where we provide free mammograms for women who meet the criteria. They can't afford them. They between the ages of when they're supposed to get a mammogram and when they're not supposed to get a mammogram. So we help those women, we have a helpline. Um, we do a lot of different things with other organizations here in San Antonio. In October, of course, we do talks and telling them about breast cancer, what it is and what they should be looking for and how they should rehab. So, Pre rehab. So rather than just waiting until after your diagnosis and start exercising or eating properly, we want to make sure that we do this before we're even diagnosed. Mm -hmm. So we talk about the importance of keeping up with your health, mm -hmm. knowing your body, mm -hmm. and doing what you're supposed to do, what all the doctors tell us to do, which is eat healthy, exercise. Mm -hmm and moderation of drinking. Yeah, and I call those stackable items. Yes, yes, yeah. the stackable items that make such a difference right. in our optimal health care exactly. no matter what, exactly. Exactly. particularly in the breast cancer. Right, yeah. so yeah. that's what we do locally. Mm -hmm. Plus we're on a lot of different committees such as data safety and monitoring committee at the Mays Cancer Center, um, other different uh, research programs at Mays Cancer Center. I know Denise is on a research grant. I think you're still on that one, right? Yes, yeah, there is one. Yeah. yeah. So um, we, we do that also. We are, Denise and I are research advocates, but of course, there are all different types of patient advocates, mm -hmm. whether you just go to support, like coming up on the race Saturday, where you just you know, pay your little fee and you get to, to run and walk. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, and you're, and you're a survivor, you're a patient advocate because you're supporting the group that you're, that you're uh, running for. Mm -hmm. So we do that. Plus in December of the year, we put on the education programs for patient advocates at the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium. And that's like our one that's known throughout the world, basically, because we usually have advocates from Europe, Australia, New Zealand, Asia. We've had Sweden, Denmark, all sorts of different, UK, all sorts of different countries. Uh, Israel, Palestine, uh, one from Israel, one from Palestine, they were at the same meeting, mm -hmm. which was really good. Yeah. And uh, also with Japan and uh, Turkey, and several other countries that have come along with all the patients, advocates from the US. This is a scientific conference. Yeah. 
So you want to make sure that whoever comes understands the medical terminology. Otherwise, even with our programs, they're going to be like way over their heads. Yeah. So, and they'll leave and think, what am I doing? Why am I here? Yeah. So you need to have some background in the medical field, whether you've gone to any of the uh, project lead or the AACR survivors, scientist survivor program, anything where you're learning about cancer, about what it is, how it goes, what you need to do, uh, what your doctor knows, basically. Mm -hmm. Since my doctor always, when I get back, says, okay, what'd you learn? What'd you hear? <laughs> what do I need to do? Do I need to change anything? Yeah. yeah so, well, Sandy, yeah. not to interrupt, but I'm Please thinking do. this this is just a perfect segue. And I see Denise nodding her head. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, so tell us how I got involved with the San Antonio, <laughs> because the first year I went, I was the deer in the headlights person <laughs> walking around because that's the first year I opened my foundation. And I'm like, I think this is a conference I should go to, but I'm not really sure. And then Denise saw me with the deer in the headlights book. So take it from there. Tell us how our relationship has evolved. <laughs> okay, Terry. So my mentor here, <laughs> the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium is the largest breast cancer symposium in the world. So even though um, the Breast Cancer Foundation has an advocate program there, we have a limited number of advocates who can actually be part of our program every year. But we have lots of advocates that come from around the country to, to the program itself to see, and Terry was one of them um, several years ago. And that sometimes our program can't reach out to all those advocates. And I always try to do that. And I saw Terry and I just liked her right away. So we there was a dinner that was going to be off of the site that was with another um, organization that wanted to tell about a test that they had. And so I said, well, come on, let's go. And we went over to a really nice restaurant and we met the people that were doing, um, you know, they were presenting their program. And that's how we became involved in here. And I have been pretty cool, or good friends since then. We've kept in touch since then over the years yeah. at the Alamo. And then she came um, to our program and was one of our regular um, participants one year, a selected participant. And every time we have a chance to run into each other, she's been in Columbus, Ohio when I've been there and we've gotten <laughs> together. I've been able to be down here in San Antonio when she's come here. And so, it's just always nice to run into each other. Again. Yeah, these two wheeled me in <laughs> with their uh, charisma, <laughs> their advocacy charisma, I'll call it. But Denise, you left out the part where you said to me, Terry, you should really apply for leads. So for the lead program? Yes, for, lead, yeah. for project lead. Mm -hmm. And I knew nothing about it, but I did apply. And then that's the year that I came yes. back the following yes. year as um, a an advocate. And the, the sessions at night are what I really like at the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium. I don't know which one of you want to speak to those, <laughs> but those are some of the most uh, sought after and collaborative learning projects uh, and, and opportunities, I feel like, for advocates. So either one of you can speak to that, I don't care. Okay, well, we, we've had a, we have several different programs for the patient advocates to attend. Uh, we have a welcome dinner, which we're going to have again this year. So if you come, you're welcome so at the welcome dinner. She's really <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to be back in San Antonio in December. You better. <laughs> um, we also work with uh, the pharmaceutical companies to provide evening after the symposium. So we do advocate chats, we do the education programs with the National Breast Cancer Coalition, with AACR, with NCI, with the FDA. And so what we're doing with those is trying to teach what is going on at the symposium, what's new, what you need to know. Uh, we also, at that point, will um, when our evening programs are hot topic mentor sessions. Mm -hmm. We have three to four, sometimes five, 
um, mentors. And what's really fantastic about, about the mentors is that they generally will email us and say, are you having the program this year? Can I be a mentor? Mm -hmm. and because they love working with the patient advocates. They're not just you know, pointing toward the doctors. They are down in the trenches, yeah. talking to patients every day, treating patients. They get to know the patients. And so they want to keep that up. And so they'll talk about the different sessions that happen during the day. Mm -hmm. And then after that, then it's open to questions and answers from the mm -hmm. audience. And I know that usually the first time that um, a mentor is there and the patients start asking questions, mm -hmm. they're like, oh my God, she knows a lot. Because they're shocked that the patient advocates know. Yeah. And that, you know, this is why, why we're holding this program. Because to get them where there's like a give and take with the oncologist. Yes, I was going to use the word trust. Trust, Build, yes. Building trust in the advocacy space. Yes, that's that's, that's the word that I like to yeah. use. And so, and I do think that it's good for advocates to see um, that industry is is supporting this and becoming involved with the advocates. So, um, yeah, I mean, this was a great explanation, you guys. So, so we did just have lunch together, <laughs> and I um, invited uh, Sandy and Denise to do an extended version of this. So I'm just, this is a little bit of a carrot or a teaser today, but I have invited them to do a podcast uh, on the Deep Sea Journey podcast channel so that we can give all of the listeners a further explanation of really the spectrum of what a patient advocate looks like. So I want you all to stay tuned for that probably coming out maybe by the end of the summer, we hope, by the time we record it. Um, the end of the summer, probably, uh, I'd say August 2022 timeframe, just for a timestamp on this. Um, because in the breast cancer space, I talked to many women like all three of us who have fully been affected by breast cancer in so many ways emotionally, physically, professionally, otherwise. And women and men will say to me, you know, this has changed my life so much. I want to give back now, or I, I'm finding a different purpose in my life. And so I feel like um, in, in that podcast, we can address all of those things that all of you guys have been working with so diligently over the last few years. Uh, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, thank you guys for joining me today. Thank you. It's, it's just it's been great to see you guys again. And I'm glad that we carved out time mm -hmm. yeah, to see absolutely. each other. What a small group right here. <laughs> thank you so much for joining the Deep Sea Foundation uh, channel. And please let us know if you have any questions about this uh, particular YouTube or if there's other topics you'd like us to cover. Thanks so much for joining us today.